Now that you have your walls created, let's look at dimensioning the walls that we currently have. In order to do that, we are going to need to change some dimensions for with a dimension style manager and switch our units over to architecture. If you go into the annotate ribbon at the top, click on annotate, and this is going to switch over to all of our commands that we use to dimension or note on drawings. We are going to change our dimension style manager, which is located right here to the right of the word dimensions. This is how we access our dimension style manager. If you click on that, this box should appear and we will be able to change our dimension style. You can also type in D enter on your keyboard and that will also access the same dimension style manager. After you get to this point, we are going to modify our current dimension style and we are going to use the standard, the standard dimension, dimension style and we're going to make some modifications to it. If you look over here in the right box, you will see this is a sample of our dimensions, the way they currently look, and we are getting ready to change this to where it looks and appears as an architectural dimension. So I'm going to click on modify and as I take a look through here, I'm going to just go over a few basic things. Um, we have some um, controls on our dimensions where we have the, um, the, the length past the dimension line. We have some symbols and arrows capabilities to change this right here. We have text. We have fit, which is going to be something that we're going to be using in just a second. And then we also have primary units. So the very first thing I want to change is to an architectural style format. I'm going to click on architectural and we will have um, our dimensions now set for architecture. One of the other things we need to change is the fit or the scale for our dimensions. When we are dimensioning, we need to make sure that the dimension comes up with the right size based off of our drawing. So if you remember our drawing or the length of our house is about 35 feet. So therefore we're going to need to bump up that scale and change all of these items accordingly to make our dimensions appear at the right size. They're, right now they would be very, very small. So let's take a look. So we're going to go over to the overall scale factor. And for right now, I'm going to use the value of 96 in order to increase the scale factor for this drawing. And I'm going to change this to 96 and I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to take a look at one of my dimensions and see what that looks like. Without having a border right now, I'm really taking a guess at um, you know, exactly what size I need. I probably really don't even need 96 because that is fairly, that's a fairly large uh, value there. So I'm going to go back to that dimension style manager and I'm going to change that dimension style um, to a different value. So I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to switch that to 48 instead because I think it's going to be okay to have that um, going. So I'm going to make sure that my units are architecture. I have this all set up and that looks good. I'm going to hit close on that and there we go. 35. We have 35 feet and that's a little bit more in proportion. So this is going to um, have a set for our dimension styles. If you, while we're here, if you prefer to have the little tick mark, um, this is an arrowhead, but if you prefer to have the tick mark, you can always go back into the um, first, I'm sorry, the second one and change the arrowheads to the architectural tick mark. So um, here we go, architectural tick. Like we're going to keep the leader with a regular leader size and hit OK and close that. And then you can see that now we have an architecture uh, tick mark. So this is how you set up this drawing's dimension style manager. Um, and that's going to be like the, the very first step. So if you would like to place some of these dimensions, um, even though we haven't formally introduced the dimensioning commands, let's just take a look at the possibilities with our dimensions. So you have um, 
two dimension commands. You have this one right here, and then you have this one over here. This one is kind of like a dimension all type thing. Um, you can point to um, specific lines, and it's going to look at those values. And then it's going if you pick the object itself, it's going to let you, allow you to pull the dimension um, at a specified place. Um, if you point your pointer to the endpoint, you can then work on your spacing. But for this architectural drawing, we um, are going to, it's going to be okay if you just place the dimensions wherever you can um, work those in. Now, if you want something a little bit more exact, like you want to pick the actual from point to point, you may want to use the linear dimension command. And that's going to allow you to pick like from an endpoint to maybe like a midpoint of something and you can drag um, that dimension up. So I, I haven't drawn the window there, but I, I just picked the midpoint of the line and I'm going to place that there. Now you can see that my text and my, um, my leader, my dimension lines and text is all running together. So I've got a, a decision to make at this point. Either I need to make the spacing increase on these dimensions or I may have to go back and change that dimension scale factor just a little a little less. It really kind of depends on what size paper you're putting this on. Um, the ideal text height when you're done, when you print, is going to be an eighth of an inch. So it does, that comes into play, but we don't even have a border yet, so we're just going to use this here. So just make sure you're spacing those dimensions out and you're giving yourself enough room to where the dimensions are not running into the extension lines. Another thing that you can do is also click on the dimension itself. And if you click on the dimension and pick on the grip, you can move that um, value over and around. So um, you can place that dimension somewhere else other than where it originally located. So finish up putting the dimensions on this drawing and like I said before, if you need, if you find that once you start dimensioning to the inside and that gets too crowded, just go over here and make modifications to the actual fit right here. I usually use these, um, it's all relative to the scale, like a quarter, a quarter of an inch equals a foot or an eighth of an inch equals a foot. So these numbers change in the increment of 12. So this next one, next time I'm going to just go down and put that as 24 and you'll see how that will change those dimensions. So there we get a little bit um, more space in between the dimensions and we can have the, um, the space and looks a little bit more close to what the textbook has provided. So that is the dimension style manager and that is what you need to do in order to get your dimensions to set up. Thank you.